before uh, we'll do how to do this uh, export and import activity okay so suppose i want to import few jobs okay, i want to migrate the code to one environment to other environment so whenever if you want to export the code the code should be in a compiled status or job should be in finished state finished or compiled status so then only it can possible to import the code okay so code can be imported here in either x dot xml format and uh, data stage we have another format is that is dot uh, csx okay so either in uh, xml okay okay so either in xml or dot dsx format now we will see okay so coding and all i will play somewhere what is the usual preferred way xml or dsx uh, most of the companies they preferred in dot uh, dxs format Any reason why not XML? XML, they can we can do in XML also, but uh, see data recent. So recently, uh, the Git uh, came into the picture, right? Like uh, moving the code from. Exactly, that's why I'm asking. So Git came into yeah, picture. Yeah. So XML would be most. Uh, yeah, XML uh, is also we can. Either we can do in either XML or we can do in. Um, so if you're using Git, then Git, then you have to go for XML, I think, right? XML, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you're using Git, uh, you can go for XML only. And if you're not using Git, okay. So safe side is Git is the safe side where uh, you can always have the latest code availability in the system. If you want to move the code to lower environments. Uh, there is a, some mechanism, some commands to need to be that, that Git code need to be integrated with your system. Okay, so that uh, has to be. I mean, like normally when developer moving the code to a higher environments, but he has to place the code to some location. So there will be a processor to be followed from uh, client to client. It will be vary. Okay. So what a few clients will give the location once the dev code is uh, got approval and you have to export all the code in XML format and uh, place it in so and so folder and git. From there, the admin team will pick the code and uh, move to the uh, QVI UAT environments. Okay, from there, uh, admin team will take, uh, I mean, take when we move forward the code to uh, production environment, QVA, UAT and production environments. Okay, so that is one approach of mechanism. The other approach is uh, we will place, we will export all this uh, DXS code. So normally, weekly twice, the uh, weekly migrations will happen from uh, QA to UAT, QA and UAT. So, so some person in the team take the ownership of exporting all these codes into DXS format, and they they will raise a migration request, and uh, that particular uh, DXS file will be placed in so shared drive. From the shared drive is mapped to data stage. From there, they will uh, import the jobs to hide environments, QA and prepar. Okay. So migration activity will be taken care by data stage admin. Okay. And but some some person should take the ownership of uh, suppose if this team is big, there are 10 uh, data stage developers working. So each one cannot raise a single single ticket. That will be a burden for uh, admin team also. So they want one single ticket, export all the jobs that are going to uh, migrate to iron environments in a single DXS file. And they, those DXS file, we have to give the instructions. So this is the location. These are the jobs we have to make a document and uh, that document should be at, uh, attached in a change, I mean, like uh, incident ticket, something like that. So then uh, admin team will uh, move the code to QA and prepare. Okay. 
Suppose this is a random dev environment, so I want to uh, import the code. Let's we need to first thing we, we need to check is like uh, whether this code is in compile state or not. Yes, so here it is more fun. Let's finish this topic. So this is a folder, right? You need to check. All should be either in finished state or it should be in compiled state. Okay, so since we have already here in compiled state, sorry, in finished state, now we can export the code. Entire folder, enter this folder. Okay. So now uh, click on right click, export. Okay. So the best option is, uh, there are three options, like export to only dev job design, or export with executable status, export with without executable status. So the best practice is always with the executable status because uh, last compilation status, that means the job got successfully run without any issue. So that would be considered here. Okay, export the job design with executable status. And you have to give the location where you are, you want to export the file. Okay, so I will place this uh, in C drive. In C drive, I will give the jobs code MIG. I will give it the today's date. 15th May. Okay. So it will be by default TXS format. Job code, there is no file here, right? You can see in my city, there is no job code, okay? So now, now click on export. So totally seven components. If you want to add, there is an option add here. And if you want to remove like this, okay, unnecessary jobs, so I don't want uh, this. So if you want to remove this, you can remove. Okay. So now uh, what I will do? I will export all the jobs. Click on export. Okay. Now we can see the file here. Uh, so Narayan, uh, whenever the version upgrade uh, will happen, right? If we are using some 11.5 to 11.7 now latest version, so at that time uh, this activity, uh, the upgrade team needs to perform, right? Activity, uh, admin team only will perform. In general, uh, suppose uh, you are migrating your code to 8.5 to 11.7, take an example. So in this scenario, what uh, they will do is, they will export the code in production. Okay, so from the production environment, they will place the code in uh, uh, dev. From production dev uh, 11.7. Okay. Okay. Not sure this, one second. So Narayan, when you are when you are saying this, right? So how do you do parallel development? For example, two developers want to work on the same job, or uh, uh, is there any option to check check it check out the code 
so that you know no other developer can check that out from the production how, how do you usually do that in projects okay so one person okay one job both person should be worth that's what you're saying usually is there an option to check out the job so that no other person can touch that uh, suppose yeah, so let's uh, yeah 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 so so that you can uh, uh, keep the check out uh, see basically in dev environment you can do okay so you can check the check out the code so just now i have done right so the similar way uh, so other person cannot uh, so then you can delete your job from your, from this folder okay then tomorrow morning you go, you come back to work again you can uh, import the code i mean import the code again i can place it to your uh, in your folder so that even if you don't remove the job also it won't happen because if another person make changes no then if you uh, import the code again uh, what are the changes he made other person made so then it will be overwrite okay but that the code should be in safe zone like uh, the dxs file should not uh, should not be accessed to everyone that should be in your uh, in your uh, uh, vdi like uh, in your desktop client desktop okay so that is a one way of uh, i mean like another person should not interfere normally so what i will do is so uh, instead of uh, i will before end of any changes no i will create a copy of the, uh, the original job and save it into my personal folder so in my personal folder no one will touch so what he is doing no. okay so if other person uh, make some changes i will make it time of it so when the last changes has happened okay so if you feel that someone has run the job or some some changes has uh, happened then i will uh, delete the original job and uh, create a uh, copy of this and copy of this job and make the name as this a original job so that way we can do okay the safest way is take the uh, code backup in dxs format place it in the in your personal system and in your system in uh, vdi client desktop so don't keep it in shared drive keep it in shared drive every team member can access access it okay so it should be no it should be access to you only then you can import the code whenever you, you want that is one option to for the team members i mean protect from the team members okay so now i will import this code so now okay so to import this code go to imagine this is a environment now i need to import this code okay so if it is xml you can use this xml option other if you if you import the code in dart dxs format click on this okay now go to that uh, respective folder this is the one right click on import so here you can import all or you can import selected if if you click import all means all will be imported if you click on import selected means it will ask uh, what and all to be okay so here i don't want this uh, if you want to remove this you can remove so if you want to select all means select all okay so then click on okay okay select all click on okay so it is asking already the with the same jobs uh, some thing is there do you want to overwrite well yes well you need to click yes to all. So here uh, the import is happening in higher environments. How do you like compare the code before implementing? You know how does the administrator usually compare between uh, code to see what has changed? So we can check in. Uh, see, there are two categories. So we can create a job uh, overview. Okay, so that is one option. Uh, 
that com the comparison they they can see like before suppose, suppose uh, one developer has modified the job or uh, enhanced it right so then i then lead has to review it to see what are the changes that have been made and approve the changes to be moved into production then how do you usually review it uh, uh review see uh, okay so here the review will happen uh, by based on the changes what and all uh, needs to be done accordingly the, the review will happen the other way of uh, reviewing the job is like they can go through this uh, generate report okay so here the report will be generated and uh, they can compare the reports okay so report will be generated here and uh, okay okay so clicking on the So these reports can be saved somewhere, then you can compare. See, this is the overview of the job with project details and everything, what and all we have defined. If any new changes happen, no? so like that we can do the comparison. Hello. Okay, clear, Narayana. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. So this is one option, and manually you can check uh, the job. Okay. So there will be see if you are making any changes, change request. So existing copy, we need to take a backup. Okay, like uh, renaming the old code or something like that. So with that we can compare with uh, that job to the new changes what you made. Okay. Now we can see the, I mean, for, now we can see all are in a compiled state. Before it was in a finished state, right? Now we move the code to, we have imported the code. Now it has changed it to compiled state. When you move the code to higher environments, it will be in compiled state only. So this is the way to migrate the code from uh, one environment to another environment. Yeah. 